Today we're doing a walkthrough of NeuroStudio, a game engine plugin for creating next generation AI agents. In the background you can see an example of such an agent exploring the game environment. The chief benefit of using NeuroStudio to create AI agents like this is that instead of having to handcraft behaviors for your AI like pathfinding or attack and defense, simply choose a reward for the behavior you want to see and let the AI figure out itself how to achieve that behavior. This style of AI is called deep reinforcement learning and combines neural networks with a temporal learning model. The temporal learning algorithm used here is deep Q learning. This is a powerful framework that's spurring a revolution in robotics and AI control mechanisms. First I want to explain in broad brushstrokes the example we are looking at so you can get a feel for how the system works. The setup you're looking at is not a game per se, but actually a test in psychology called a match to sample task. It's been used to study learning in animals and to test working memory. The idea is that the subject only gets rewarded if it performs a certain series of actions under very specific conditions. In this case, the AI has to travel to the cone and then the gold food bowl while simultaneously jumping in order to receive a reward. Any other combination of actions or environmental stimuli will not result in a reward. I have also used a match to sample task to demonstrate vanilla Q learning in a similar video to which you can find a link in the description. The benefit of deep Q learning is that it can be scaled up over a much larger environment and action space than a tabular based method like Q learning. In either event, the agent learns through trial and error experimentation, first going through a period of random behavior in which it accumulates knowledge about the environment and it's how its actions combine with that environment to produce rewards. After a certain amount of exploration, it can switch to an exploitation phase in which it uses that acquired knowledge to start making strategic decisions. This is very much like how you might use food rewards to train a dog. The agent you see right now is in the exploration phase, so it's just behaving randomly, moving chaotically between the game locations. Let's fast forward and see it in the exploitation phase. To do that, we'll pause the game, go into the code, and disable the training visualization variable. The agent will now cycle very quickly through the exploration phase, using that experience to train a neural network within the learning engine. After this is finished, it will immediately begin to act strategically. It takes about 300 random exploratory moves before the agent has acquired sufficient knowledge to begin succeeding at this particular task. The number of training episodes would change depending on the complexity of the task and the parameters of the neural network, such as how many hidden layers it has and what the learning rate is set to. Now let's walk through some of the code to see how easy it is to change an agent's behavior using this system. First we'll drop into the AI character controller where the brains of the agent is located. Here we can see two main logic loops which constitute the exploration and exploitation phases of the agent's behavior. Inside the exploration loop we can call up the reward function and change this so that the agent responds to any combination of stimuli that we wish to form the new behavior. For instance, if you wanted the agent to simply remain at the gold food bowl, 
we disable the other conditions so that it would be rewarded only for going to that gold food bowl. Now let's look under the hood and do a brief overview of some of the other functional components of the system. The first important step is to initialize action and environmental variables so the agent has a table of all the pertinent things that can affect how it is rewarded. That takes place in these functions load sensory input and define action space. Next, we need to choose some random behavior for the agent during its exploration phase. This is accomplished in the Choose Exploratory Action function. Following this, the agent needs to know what changed in its environment after the action it just took. This is accomplished in the Make Observations function, which gathers the agent's sensory data so that it can be passed to the learning engine. Next, we proceed to the Reward function that we have already discussed, in which the agent's behavior gets rewarded and the agent learns if it's received a reward. Once that has been done, the agent must pass this information along with, with a record of its environmental observations and actions to the neural network. The NeuroStudio learning engine and the accompanying neural network exists as a separate executable file that must be launched prior to play. It is located in the game assets directory and communicates with the agent via a socket I.O. connection. The idea is that the learning engine and the neural network need not be stored locally, but could be in the cloud or another type of edge device, allowing for distributed computation. You can think of the learning engine as a large collection of mathematical weights that get adjusted over time depending on the agent's experience. This allows it to remember what actions and stimuli led to rewarding experiences and which did not. The magic is that you can then scale this system up to learn strategies for an arbitrarily complex reward. It can even learn strategies that are more complex than a human can learn. An important thing to remember when using the NeuroStudio learning engine is that the parameters of the neural network have to be tuned to match the complexity of the task the agent is trying to learn. A very simple neural network with only one hidden layer might be sufficient to learn the game of tic-tac-toe, but a game like StarCraft might require hundreds of hidden layers. An advantage of using NeuroStudio is that you can adjust all these parameters of the neural network right from blueprints. It can take some experimentation to get the parameters right for the task you want the agent to learn. So don't be discouraged if the agent fails to learn the behavior right off the bat. After the agent calls the neural network in the call learning engine function, a prediction is returned based upon the agent's experience about the best action to take given the observations the agent has made. Next, moving to the exploitation loop, we can see that it is really almost identical to the exploration phase, except that instead of the agent taking random actions, it uses the results passed to it from the learning engine to choose a strategic action. So that covers the nuts and bolts of the NeuroStudio system. A more detailed explanation can be found in the documentation, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section.